Right, I've ticked the base of Rusty being in this video because this is not even going to involve that much of me, much less the dog. And he is, if you can't tell, a little bit warm. So I'm going to let him go and chill out over there and I'll bring him back at the end. The other day, I posted this image onto Instagram. Now, if you haven't guessed already, this is mildly edited. In fact, here's the original file. Yes, I went from a rather mundane looking daytime shot of the Giants Causeway in Northern Ireland from a few years ago to a rather over fantasized version with uh, a supermoon and the Milky Way and the Northern Lights all in the one shot. Now all of this was done using the newest version of Luminar 4, I think it's like 4.2 something or other. And it's got some new features that allow you to add objects into the sky, which is pretty much what I've done here. Now, I have done a, a full review of an older version of Luminar 4 that I published uh, a few months back. My main criticisms of Luminar back then were generally the, the amount of time it took to do the various things, export times, etc. None of that in this version has particularly changed, but the newer features do add a whole new realm as to what you can do with the images. So this video is really going to be a bit of a quick tutorial showing you how I went from mundane daytime shot to kind of eccentric nighttime shot. Just showing you how easy it all is to do in Luminar. Now, obviously, all of this is personal preference. You might be someone who likes to try and keep your file editing to a minimum and try and keep the finished image as close to the original as possible. But then there are some people that do like to create those really eccentric composites that could never really happen in the real world, and that's part of their charm. This was really my first go at one of those types of shots. Now, just before we get into the tutorial side of things, I do also want to highlight Luminar 4 is currently having a bit of an Easter sale. It's slightly reduced until about the 14th of April, and I also have a discount code down below. So if you haven't already got Luminar and you want to get it, now's the best time to do so. There is a link in the description down below to that. Now, to start the tutorial. So obviously, first thing we do, load the file into Luminar 4. Then I went into the sky replacement tool. Now, natively, this lets you select a bunch of preset skies like, you know, uh, blue sky with light clouds or sunset skies. There are even some space looking shots in there, which we will come back to later. But it does allow you to load a custom skies in there, a custom picture as a sky. So I'm going to utilize that. But what I'm going to do is create a completely black canvas in paint, save that as a JPEG file and then add that as a custom sky. So then having loaded the black sky into the sky replacement tool, uh, I had to tweak around the global, the local and the gap settings just to try and hide all of the original sky out of the way and then adjust the horizon settings to try and get as much of the old sky out of the shot as possible. Then I went into the AI augmented sky tool, which is the new feature that lets you add additional objects. So it's got things like fireworks and hot air balloons. There are even some moons and some planets. On the file that I originally uploaded, I used my own personal image of the moons. So it was kind of my own photos that made it up. But for this one, I think we're going to use a planet. Now, having resized and repositioned the planet to where I want, we can now change the sky to a starry night shot. But if I try and go to the starry night sky straight from the black sky now, what it's going to do is revert to the daytime sky and then try and add the nighttime sky. So what we first need to do is export the image as a new file and then re-import it as a single image back into Luminar so that when we try and change the sky now, it's actually trying to change the black sky. The only negative is that trying to replace a jet black image with a new sky, the new sky does look more faded than it usually would. So we're going to have to try and bring that back. So for that, I use the AI structure tool, which is a bit similar to the clarity tool in Lightroom, except it adds it to the entire image and it makes the foreground quite contrasty, which I don't want. So I'm going to use a layer mask to layer out just the sky so it doesn't affect the foreground at all. 
Now this is where I notice an aspect of Luminar that I'm not particularly a fan of, which is that whenever you enter a masking tool, regardless of what version it is, it always defaults to a 50% opacity and 100% softness, which I very rarely use like that. I would much prefer, to be honest, if it just defaulted back to whatever you had the last time. Anyway, moving on. Now I'm going to tweak the color of the foreground because obviously the foreground was taken during the day and if this was truly a night shot, it would look very different to what it currently looks like. So I'm going to adjust the colors slightly to try and make the foreground less green and more purpley as though it's being lit by a night sky. Again, I'm going to use a layer mask to control this just to the foreground so it doesn't change the sky to more purple as well. Next, I use the mystical tool to add a bit of a haze to the foreground. Next, we're going to go back to the AI augmentation tool to add the Aurora effect in. Now, this is another reason why I had to export the image and re-import it, because currently the augmentation tool only lets you add one item in per picture. Having added the Aurora, I resized and repositioned it and adjusted the amount and refined the edges to try and blend it into the image as best as I could. I then added a little bit of a vignette and then re-exported and re-imported the image again. Now with the new re-import, I then added some more structure slash clarity and focused it just on the Milky Way because at the minute the Milky Way looks a little bit faded. Then I used the sun rays tool and I placed a, what should have been a starburst behind the planet and I tweaked around with the settings a little bit to try and give a little bit of a glow and a little bit of a starburst to the planet without making it look too crazy. Obviously a planet wouldn't naturally have a starburst, that kind of what makes it a little bit more fanciful. Following that, I tweak the colors a little bit more just to bring the color temperature down and shift a bit more purple into the tint to go for that bit more of a nighttimey kind of glow. I then added a little bit of light fog across the horizon. So for this, I used the fog tool, which just adds uh, basically a haze to the entire image. And I then used a mask to edit that out. So what I did with that was used a, a brush tool about a 50% opacity to mask a strip across the horizon. I then shifted the opacity up to about three quarters and I added some additional spots of denser fog. I then used a weaker opacity and erased certain spots as well. So by doing random dots all the way across the horizon, it creates more of a kind of randomized view like you would naturally see from fog rather than just a consistent strip across the shot. Like I said about Luminar in my full review, it's not the most brilliantly refined piece of software at the moment. It does have some bugs and it's not the most optimized piece of software, so it does take quite a bit of time to do certain steps. I mean, even though it's not a perfect piece of software, it's still a really powerful piece of software. And for really extreme edits like this, it is still substantially quicker than trying to do it all manually in Photoshop. But if you're watching this video before the 14th of April and you wanna get Luminar 4, go and hit the link in the description down below now. Hell, if you're watching it after the 14th of April, go and check the link out anyway. And as always, guys, if you have any questions or queries, comment boxes down below. While you're down there, if you haven't already, please consider hitting the subscribe button. Thank you so much for stopping by, and hopefully, I will see you in the next video.